next best picture. I'm so happy to be talking to you, Christy. Hi, nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you too. I this film, Daddyo. I know you were a playwright for uh, this came out, and I'm curious when in your conception of this did you realize that it was a film as opposed to a play? You know, when I first had the idea of this, and I promise this is very much the truth. It's interesting how this happened. I I saw it as a film first in my mind. Uh, because I, you want to be on the phone, you want to eavesdrop on the phone, you want to really experience that drive. That drive is so visceral and visual. Uh, the ability to be in his point of view, looking at her in the rearview mirror, mirror, or her point of view, looking at him, like the ability to really choose those things and to be up close and very personal. Um, but as a playwright, I had yet to build a bridge to Hollywood. I wasn't um, part of the cinematic conversation at all. And so, uh, because those are two very different worlds. And so I thought, well, maybe I should uh, write it as a play and maybe I could leverage it as a stage play and then it could become a movie. Um, so for a very short time, it was formatted as a stage play that never got produced. Uh, it was never actually a piece of live theater. And so, uh, so then I got excited by the notion of, well, maybe it could be fully realized the way that I first envisioned it. So then I turned it into a screenplay. Um, and I'm so glad that, I'm so glad it turned out the way that it did because it's fully stepping forward in the way that I really saw it in my head. So yes, this is an original screenplay that at one point was formatted as a stage play that never saw the light of day. <laughs> I, I love this journey for, yes. this, for this piece of writing. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, and even, you know, it is a two-hander and I, I read that you, Sean, and Dakota kind of rehearsed it like it was a play. And if I was correct, in Sean Penn's living room? <laughs> it was incredible. So yeah, there were two days actually that Sean invited uh, Dakota and I to his home. And the first day we kind of did table work where we had the, the screenplay in front of us and we were doing a page turn and we were talking about it. And then the second day when we came, yeah, it was like, well, let's get it up on its feet a little bit. And yeah, we were in his living room and he had a, he duct taped a hand mirror to a broom to like a chair. And then he sat in a chair and then Dakota was behind him on the couch. Because if you think about it, they're not actually ever really looking at each other. They can really only connect in the mirror. So I think Sean wanted to have a sense of what that would feel like. Uh, and so those were some of the two best days of my life. We didn't over rehearse it, uh, but we did get to enjoy those couple of days. And then, and then we met on set and we kept going. How much during, how much of that time did you spend thinking about things like camera angles, how am I actually going to film what they're doing versus thinking about the characters versus thinking I'm in Sean in his living room with him and Dakota Johnson acting my work. <laughs> I think it's all happening at the same time, right? So it was like, this is a very indie movie. We had a very limited budget and we had very limited time. Uh, we shot this in 16 days, right? So yes, the director part of my brain is like, we only have 16 days and okay, the cameras and da 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 da. And then, you know, the writer in me is like, okay, do I like that word still? Do I want to change that? And then yes, and then, you know, the, the biggest part of me is like, how is it that I'm in Sean Penn's house hanging out with these two incredible actors? It's all happening simultaneously. And uh, that's what makes it just so glorious and complicated and wonderful. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I, both of them are such talented actors. And in this film particularly, Dakota is doing so much business with her hands, her hair, her eyes, her mouth. As a director, and knowing that you know you want to get in close to her in in these moments, did you ever have to step in and say, "Okay, you're actually giving me too much great stuff to work with. I can't possibly get it all." You know, we um, I like so my style is I like to direct a lot on the page, and that comes from me being a playwright. Playwrights uh, block the scenes. You know, they come in stage left, they turn on the light, and they speak, you know. So I had a lot of it blocked. He, he clocks her in the rear view. We're on the wheel, the hum of the wheel. Uh, he, slams the, um, uh, he slams the trunk, and we go to black. Like, a lot of that was already scripted. Um, and then when we did the table work, you know, we talked through it. Uh, but I will say, once we get on set, I like to be the kind of director that doesn't helicopter too much. 
Uh, we've already talked about the intention of each moment. A lot of it is on the page. We, we'll do a rehearsal where we'll block it a little bit, but I have to say, like, especially for something like this, I found it to be really important to really also give them breathing room to explore and to have fun. Uh, so I have to say, Dakota gave me a lot of different options that I could play with and edit. Um, I, I, honestly, it was an embarrassment of riches when we got into the edit. But honestly, there were a lot of times, sometimes I'd step in and say, oh, can we try one where he's a little more cheeky and you throw it away, fine. Uh, but when it came to their mannerisms, I think it was just really important to just let them explore. Um, and I think you see that on screen, that they're just living in the moment. Absolutely. It feels like they are really having this conversation right yes. in front of us. It, it's, it's really great to watch. Um, and I know we're coming up at the end of our time together, but I wanted to ask, you know, like in the internet age, with so many options available to us to participate in conversations about anything you could possibly imagine, and arguably in the age of oversharing about our lives, why do you think we still feel so uncomfortable talking about relationships and sex? I feel like you're right, we overshare online. It's easy to hide online. It's easy to hide behind our phones. And if this movie does anything, I hope it's a reminder that if we could put down our phones for a moment and really engage with another person, I actually think you can have really uh, profound, potentially life-changing conversations, even with a stranger, especially with a stranger, because you're never gonna see them again. And that's the beauty of a New York City cab. It's different than jumping in an Uber or Lyft. It's a very specific experience. Those of you who have had this experience, you know, yep. they, I've had people run up to me after screenings and say, I have to tell you, I had one woman uh, a couple days ago, she said the best advice I ever got was from a New York City cabbie. Um, so, and then those of you who haven't had that experience, I really hope, like, talk to your bartender, talk to a person that's riding the train next to you, like, I, I, this movie is an invitation to start really engaging with the people around you because we are losing something very special. We're losing the art of what it means to just talk to each other. We're not so isolated and alone. Um, we're actually part of a big global village. It's a really beautiful way of putting it. And sometimes that village just exists in a New York City cab. That's right. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Christy Hall, thank you so much again for joining us. It was so nice to meet you. Thank you for having me.